Fallen, right? Who has yeah. extremely good impact as an upper and a caller. So I'm sure MSL will find a way to um, have an impact using his op. Going up against Henny, just as Thorne mentioned, though, he's not going to want to take those duels. Henny's like by far a better opper. And, uh, you know, when Guardian says that uh, someone has destroyed him an entire map through, I don't think that you want to take a fight with that guy. Well, here's Lucas in the window right now, spotting things out. Smoke is going to go in. That comes out from behind the island, so he's not able to see anything. Phelps playing close range here up on the balcony in Showtime. He's going to be in Sandwich, and it will be Phelps coming away with that first frag. Bolts with the second. Showtime with the third. Kirby gets on the board for Team Dignitas, the one kill, but it's Tempo Storm. Four men now to the two on Dignitas. Kirby coming over the stairs, and where is MSL? He's right there next to him. So partners in crime, but they get arrested. You know, this is worrisome because uh, Tignos are actually really, really good at pistols. Uh, typically, they armor up and they like to explode out mid on this map, but uh, couldn't find their frags, and, and that's a huge part of the plan for them. I think uh, they believe just go really loud on utility, uh, get the armor, hit your shots, and uh, get into the site. And they couldn't do it. So, tempo, seal that up, and it's a great way to start CT side. So important to keep your economy up on the side, as uh, it can be broken so easily. Yeah, we will see the majority of rifles coming out. Three FAMAS there, the cheaper ones. M4 and an MP7 as the sight lines on Mirage are often very long range, so you don't have to worry as much about those uh, annoying Tech 9s or potentially CZs if you're launders and you use that on the D side. <laughs> I play to win. There's Henny coming away with the first kill. He gets a very, very aggressive, somewhat lucky to be alive. He backs off on 3 HP. MSL waiting for someone in the window, but can't land the shot. There's Bolts coming away with one. Config finally getting the one dig, but now Luke is peeking off of the catwalk. He finds Kirby, and it's Config with another one. Three on two now. Wow, two Wundigs right now. Bomb moving through underpass, and I think it was spotted as uh, the bomb was dropped under window off that kill. Wow, the Wundig missed by Rubino, who comes up a ramp. That would have caused quite a distraction, but now they can kind of focus their attention on both sides equally without having to worry too much. And uh, it looks like N1 is over at the A site, so yeah. We've got a full HP play here defending B versus Config, who's been a B so far with this Deagle. Yeah, if he finds this uh, next one dig or just lands the kill any way possible, it should lead to a bomb plant, which would be massive right now for Team Dixon Tosh. Showtime, of course, does not want to let that happen at all. And the rotations are starting to come into the market. You could even see uh, the player there. That's Henny, who's low, going through the underpass. So they'll have a three-pronged retake if needed onto this site. Config does come away with one kill. That's onto Phelps. Now one versus two. Still 20 seconds on the clock, but when he finds Showtime, Showtime will win it. Team I'm, ace for Tempo Storm. You know, I like Dignitas. I'm not trying to be a biased guy. I really wanted to see that, that <laughs> Eagle ace. That was so It close. was starting to look like it might happen there. Oof. And you know what was so cool about that play was like, him, he could have planted that bomb for apps, and Showtime would have run a risk by running into the site to kill him. So Config, I think, knew this. I mean, once he got out, that, that was like free reign to plant the bomb. But he was playing to win the round. Like, he actually moved around the site in a way that um, I don't think Showtime would have expected and almost caught them off guard. But either way, the damage is done, and that's quite a bit of economic um, investment that Tempo Storm have lost now. Yeah, and actually on the rebuy, we'll see a, a lot more submachine guns come out, two MP7s and the UMP there on Phelps, and it's just the Glocks. Config with that Deagle one more time just because of, uh, I think, the success that he found with him in the last round. Feels confident to use it again, but they are getting cleaned up here uh, below the window in middle, and now it is just Hensky as Henny pushed through spawn uh, to get that kill. Yeah, this is a round where, you know, they, they're rebuying to make up ground because they, they lost so many guns last round. Uh, but the thing is, they've got to upgrade now. And uh, Dignitas, I mean, noticing that there were Glocks, you're not expecting two more saves, you're just expecting one. And I, I like, I really like how Dignitas Glock save there. Like, if you don't talk about anything, you know it's a full save. People are just going to pick up a P250 because it's so much better than a Glock. But on that round, when you're going to buy the next, you have to realize that a P250 means no smoke, a P250 means no head armor, no flash. Uh, and the utility you're going to have is so sparse in the first place that it's really important to uh, be thrifty. So all AKs now for Team Dignitas. You can see three members here for Dignitas out of a ramp. Now just two because Phelps is close and personal with that UMP. Coming away with one and bolts ooh, through the smoke. Thought he might find it, but it's Hensky that will get that kill. He survives barely on 8 HP and it's actually man advantage. Now evened up as Henny hits that shot. Quick flash over. He's still... Smoked off, and another flash there on to the stairs. Smoke's all dissipating there from the connector and from the stairs. Two on two, and he's just holding the angle on the site and is, where is Showtime? Showtime's actually just right next to him there on his left. So both players in CT 
And the bomb will go down. Will they start to spam the box? The op is not spamming. They're expecting perhaps a peek. Some damage was actually dealt, and both players now falling back to the ramp. Penny was kind of expecting the jump over on that uh, triple box. And wow, not seeing him at all. Showtime actually had him in his sights. Uh, Kirby will best him, though, peeking over those boxes of Tetris. And Henning's going to take a very quick reaction shot. And another one there onto the A ramp, but missing them both. Finally gets Kirby as he starts to fall off Tetris. What's and now up? Henny, he does actually know where Rubino is. He missed a shot on him already. He just wants to tap the bomb, try to bait out this peak. And <laughs> Rubino... Not going to give him it. Could have stuck it. the bomb in that situation. Really nice from Rubino. Oh, oh my goodness, Henny through the floor. He won't win the round, but what an insane shot. You know, this is also a map where, like, Henny is really good at opping. We've seen some breakout performances from him on Mirage, and it's also really friendly to offers, especially on CT side, so no surprise that he hit some of these shots, but uh, just in general, amazing shooting. Now, that was a very close round. Uh, Rubino is someone you can trust in a 1v1 to pretty much make the best decision every single time. Uh, you know, whenever we watch him play, I'm always just ready to watch Rubino win We're big Rubino that. fans. Yeah, big Rubino fans. Um, and, uh, yeah. So that was close. A lot of damage done by Tempo Storm, but didn't seal it up. And it was a good 2v2 by them to be patient. Uh, oh, my goodness. Okay, that is a scout, right? Of course, this area commemorated for uh, jumping with scoped weapons nowadays. There's Lucas to bring down one more, and Henny will hit a shot from the market window. Players are quite low, and that's actually a nade to take down Rubino, so no bomb even going to be planted. The nade stops it, and then Phelps takes down config. Oh, that's enormous. A full buy just shut down by that scout basically did uh, almost 300 damage, and it had just put Dignitas in the hole right now. They've only got between 1,400 and 2,800 on their richest player to put together a buy, and it's no surprise that we see a force up now anticipating the double save. A lot of people might look at this and think it's a kind of a, um, a tilt buy, but it's not. It's because they're not going to have a good buy next round, and, and they're basically just waiting or relying on loss bonus to make up for the ground that they lose. And it looks like we've got, uh, is that Rubino lurking around in Palace? Everyone else setting up, well, initially in those B halls, we've just got Tensky left in the kitchen. And that SMG is going to move in. Showtime to take him out for $600. Phelps keeping an eye on the ramp or underpass there from a connector, but he's now backed off. And yes, it was Rubino who's up in Palace. Oh, Config, I think he saw those feet. Uh, he, oh, oh. Okay, okay, that's a spec smoke. That was smoke. a little weird, yeah. It had to be a spectator smoke thing going on. And that's into a four on four, but Bolts now with a triple box with a nice little spray transfer. Rubino does capitalize on that and finds him. Dignitas, a man down with a little over a minute to go in this round. Yeah, they're looking to do damage, but they actually have some stake here. They've. Uh, They've got full HP, and the bomb... Oh, actually, the bomb going oh, down there. That's timing right there. Makes a world of difference. Lucas finding that kill has has control of the bomb. No one's moving, actually. I think no one wants to get flanked, and I feel I think they feel comfortable leaving Lucas in this part of the map. Is he not spotted the bomb? I'm surprised we don't even have one rotation out to help him defend. Uh, I, think, I think you might have called it. Like, no one wanted to give up their spot. They felt that they had everything watched, and they know they've only got Tech 9s. They should be able to win, win the duels. So the thing is, like, you could have two people, you could have all three people move to B and then just have one dedicated watching flank, or you could have one watching uh, watching for market window and then one watching cat from bench and then one watching the bomb or B apps and then have all those people be able to support each other while also holding flanks together. So I, I'm not entirely sure that they, they saw it, but it seemed like they were confident either way. Yeah, so reason. now we've got just the Glocks, as you mentioned, like having to go in for that force buy because the double eco is going to be forced upon you. So really no stake in this round right now for Dignitas. Showtime's going to go up on top of the white van. Now over to the platform. Pretty and brutal. Ooh, will he expect Config this close? Uh, there is a, a chance for kind of the bait and switch, but it doesn't look like Config's going to go for it. <laughs> he still has his knife out. Could he actually? They're trying to bait him in for the chance knife. No, never mind. He will eventually pull up that Glock and go to peak. Showtime takes away three with all of his silenced weapons. And it's just Kirby left up. He does grab that A1S and a smoke. He'll try to uh, yeah, use the smoke to cover his retreat. And now he's going to go right back out into it. Almost no chance that he's going to be able to save here. So he's understandably looking to take a fight. Uh, just gets sprayed down to the smoke. But with the help of Lucas, gets taken down. And Tempo Storm are up 6-1. And we've already seen two full Glock saves from Dignitas. And that is brutal. So, I mean, you can say that Tempo Storm uh, winning all these rounds is pretty impressive. Uh, they've been great. There have been great sight holds so far. They've also beaten Dignitas on their default one time, and that's notable. But uh, I think 
the biggest thing is that the Temple Storm are winning the economic game and they're doing it with all these rounds in succession. So if they keep that up, like if they win this round, for example, they're going to have another save, another two for one. So hugely important for King Toss that they uh, start to claw their way back into this game. And you could expect that this round might be difficult for Team Tiggentoss because they finally got out to another buy with all AKs, but now they're dealing with something they haven't seen before, the double ops. And actually, the first op already dealt with MSL. We'll take down Showtime with the AK on the catwalk. Bolts quick on the trade, and now here's Lucas at bench. Only the one kill. Tenski gets that trade immediately. A little bit of nade damage going in onto the planter, and I think even fire burning down Rubino. And he hasn't been able to get that bomb planted just yet. But Dignitas, uh, Tenski got that kill, and it has given them the man advantage. Bomb now going down and jumping through that smoke through the window. Very, very blind was Phelps. It's going to all be up to Henny now. One versus three. Hit that first op shot, and now we'll pull out that CZ, that trusted secondary weapon, and it's Rubino to peek wide, and Dignitas finding the second round. It's really nice to see Dignitas sticking to their guns and keeping the pace up in a situation where they're losing drastically, and they might be too worried to peek things or take things aggressively. And we see that that hit B that didn't work the first time. I think they put it in perspective. They saw that they got hit, that tagged by a scout a couple of times. Honestly, even though there's going to be a better gun on the site that, that this time that they went and they knew that, it wasn't going to be something that could hit them while they couldn't hit it back. And so I think they felt like they had a better chance even though they're going up against better weapons. It's actually, uh, this is Henny already situated aggressive into Palace, but Rubino just expecting that. Pre-firing pretty much as he comes around that corner. And that's Henny down. So another man advantage to Dignitas. Where things are still, you know, not, not super great. Look at Config just on a Tech 9 with a flash at the moment. Might have already used the smoke. And uh, now we've got Lucas, was playing in the site at bench last time, and it's MSL just too aware, pushes into the ladder room and will take him out. Now it's five on three. Phelps actually will refresh this smoke and somehow finding that kill onto Rubino. He'll live with 20 HP. You know, he heard him pomp prompting that smoke, so that was really close to finding that frag for good reason. 3v3 now as they move into the site. Showtime what? actually finds a headshot on Config as Tenski takes him down. And there's a trade. 2v2. Very favorable for Dignitas, though. Bolts from uh, from Kitchen picks up the op and a kill to go with it. Tenski knows that there's going to be a line of sight in the bomb, and that's got to be stressful for him. Oh, I wonder if he's going to take this fight. It seems like if he can get close to the op, it's going to be good. And yeah, Bolts tries to turn around but can't find the kill. Uh, Tenski doesn't know how low the HP is on Phelps, but finds a headshot. Doesn't even notice. Doesn't matter. And the health is being asked. Yeah, everyone immediately of, uh, uh, saying how low he is. Yeah, extremely low. I mean, Phelps almost won that duel, but wow, what a reaction from uh, Tenski. Great 1v2. Well played, and that keeps Zingtas in this game in a big way. It could have been another money-breaking round, right? Yep. Not two in a row, just one, and then back to saving. And it's actually Tempo Storm who don't have any, uh, any guns, utility, armor, nothing. They're on a full save. Let's see if they'll change things up just based on their economy. We, it looks like there is a big presence out in the middle right now, and then just two players at A. So they're trying to push off this catwalk. They've pushed one into underpass as well, but that's all being dealt with by Kirby, MSL, and Tenski, each coming away with a frag. Bolt has situated himself in a bit of an angle here in connector, so he will get the one frag, but the other boys have taken toss far away. Phelps, sure, that's a kill. <laughs> First wow. shot through that smoke, hits a headshot onto MSL, and it's actually become quite costly now for Dignitas. It's a one on two. Phelps, maybe there's a chance here. He's got no armor. I don't know if he's going to really go for this. I mean, I think what he sees right now is the opportunity to do a lot of damage and maybe keep players on the site, but the aim punch is going to be ridiculous for yeah. him. I mean, he doesn't even really have a chance to push into the site. I wonder if he should have just recycled the rifle, considering they're moving into the next round with not a whole bunch of money. Yeah, I mean, if he kept that rifle, then he could have dropped the rifle, had uh, full nades and uh, done a lot, and that's a lot of information. Well, yeah, see, I saw 105 right ADR on the player that was in the middle there for Dignitas. Looking at the kills, I have to imagine that was Tenski. We saw that insane uh, triple kill round from him where he actually clutched out that one versus two, mm -hmm. and that saved their economy. Earned them a free round against Temple Storm, although hard to say free, right? They did lose three members in that last round. But the important thing is that score, right? Dignitas now within two rounds, and here's Phelps continuing to be good here at his A-Ram position. Cool kids don't reload. He pulls out the AK, but then Rubino flying out of Palace, going to find two, and that will open up the A site. Wow, that was kind of a messy entrance into the site, but it works out in the end. And Henny, oh, does he? Showtime saved him, I oh, think. Oh, he saved his life. Yeah, Henny's still alive now, 3v3. And it's all going to go under shadow here or under porch in the shadows, however you want to call it. The bomb has been planted three on three. There's not too much utility. Two flashes in a smoke for Tempo Storm going in on this. No kits as either 
Caught Fig comes away with a double on its MSL that will oh, not find the last kill of the round. It's Lucas that'll take him out. He's moving in. Players are low. He'll turn it into a one versus one, but again, no kit. So Lucas will have to uh, acquiesce into CT spawn. Yeah, I think that was really nice. If he knew Config was a Tetris, he would have just gone for that kill. But uh, I think Tensky peeking out really early there with low HP acted as a bait and made uh, Lucas think that he actually didn't have the ability to win the round, that uh, Config was either playing really safe uh, up in apps or down the A ramp uh, in an untouchable area. So. Well played by them in that 2v1, a situation where Tempo had originally a 3v3, and it seemed like it was about to be close, but not quite, and Dignitas are about to tie this up now. Uh, are they going up against a buy? It looks like not. Lucas just recycled that rifle, and we got a bunch of pistols on them, so... Dignitas looking really good all of a sudden, and going back right to their A hit. It's nice how they don't just go for mid-control every single round. They're doing like full A hits, full B hits, like B rushes, oh. and uh, it seems like they have a deep playbook on this map. So the equipment far. value is not really there for Tempest Storm in this round, but they've already got a lot of information. They're playing a bit loose. Phelps has already completely pushed through the B halls. He's past the Tifa room. He's in spawn right now, so the flank will be coming in quickly, and it's Rubino once more. So good on the last round, exiting out of Palace and finding the opening kills onto this A site. He'll do it again here. Now Tensky with the follow-up kill. Actually, it is Rubino who found two again, and now Bolts going down on the stairs. It's Lucas, last man up in CT spawn, but Kirby will erase him, and now we're tied up. What was looking to be possibly a landslide CT half for Temple Storm has now evened up going into round 13. Yeah, this is going to be a really telling round for me. And we see the adjustment coming out. We have Showtime and Henny both picking up AWPs. I think that's a really enormous adjustment. Sometimes when you start to lose rounds in a row, um, saving so that you can get new equipment is great, but then, you know, not just going for the four rifles and one up, and putting another uh, op on the board can just change how you guys play, whether or not you talk about it. And I think that's really important wow. to be, re be able to reinvent yourself. And one interesting smoke to counter the top mid smoke that you can almost expect, expect every round. Henny opens it up, 5v4 now with a pick in the underpass. MSL goes down and they almost walked right into the other op showtime. And that's what's really interesting, right? Players will get extremely aggressive on the other side of the map once they see the op because they're like, okay, now we know we can avoid this. We can take riskier peaks. But they almost ran into a second op and uh, it almost bit them in the ass. But instead, Showtime just posted up now. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. And that, that, well, that was Tansky taking the damage, right? Down to 13 HP now. Yeah. And interest, interestingly, Temple Storm, they went for the double ops. You know, they were winning perfectly fine. They go for the double ops. That's when they lost the rifle that let Dignitas get back into this. Uh, but they will go right back into this, the second ops. And of course, Henny getting that first pick and then Showtime missing one. but doing near lethal damage to Tensky. It's a good start to the round, 50 seconds now. Phelps looking for that informational play. Dodge the flames, no get hit by a nade. He will still stay alive. Henny to find another one. Phelps finally gonna get cleaned up. Henny knows that someone is behind him here and he can't hit that shot. Doesn't look like the op was quite ready to fire yet. So Tensky's got two kills and we've gone into a three on three. You know, CTs actually have really good spots in this 3v3, even though the site's being taken up. Because our player on cat right now can watch for the cat plant. It means as long as he stays alive, there's almost no zones where he can plant. What a great move from Dignitas to actually move into B and isolate him. And he gets traded out one for one, and they leave Cure B to try to catch flanks. Will he get a kill here? He does. Wow. And they almost 100% that round oh, off of that one play. Oh, not expecting both to be in CT, though. He actually turned to flash through the vent. So Kirby will go down, and now it's Bolts versus Config. Two players that we did actually highlight kind of coming into this as the big stars of the team. So this is quite a 1v1 to witness. There's a Molotov back to the one fan, and a quick reaction from Bolts. We'll take down wow. Config with a near instant headshot, and gets the defuse. That was insane. I mean, okay, so you, you, you get the bomb down, or you go for the defuse immediately, and the couple of plays that you can make are you can peek right away, which is, it, it almost doesn't make sense if you think that the player is going to get off the bomb, especially if there's a lot of time left to defuse. But uh, trying to read that play, that he might go and stick it, we had, um, uh, we had config peek out immediately, and why he did this is because when you're defusing the bomb, your crosshair is focused on the bomb. It's going to be on, near the ground. So it's like, okay, here's an opportunity. He gets the bomb right away. No matter what, I know he's not going to be aiming directly at me. And I can MSL. take this fight, but Bolts just flicked up and hit that insane shot right away. Yeah, that was a very quick reaction. Thought he would, it would definitely have like the uh, the height advantage there. Those flick shots up and down are, are so much more difficult. Uh, but we had MSL lining up a smoke in middle, Molotov to the island boxes, and that almost killed MSL straight away. And then Phelps, who had that mag seven, comes away with one frag, and Bolts falling in with two of his own. So it, it's put Kirby in a very difficult position, and they knew where he was, and he will actually get that one. 
through the smoke. It's crazy how dig how many different types of takes that Dig and Toss have tried. Right there, it looked like they melted, but they tried to get away with a, a ramp walk up as well as a palace walk out, and Temple Storm were just fully ready for it. But uh, that type of play is contingent on your first player getting away with a kill uh, versus a player who maybe has a nade out or isn't clearing an angle properly, and instead Temple Storm were fully ready for it. But I think the, the thought was there, and it made a lot of sense. Well, there's been so much aggressive play. We've got Henny doing this again, the, this little smoke down that kind of can exploit that and try to get someone off the top of middle. And we, we've got Phelps also just playing aggressive into A ramp almost every single round. Wow. He gets at least one kill. That smoke is hella cute. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, hella cute. And Henny does come away with that one frag. And oh <laughs> my goodness, a blind flick. Mighty cock here be lifting off, so he was able to kind of interpolate that. But what an insane shot. And here's Showtime coming away with one at B. He's got those players stuck uh, jumping off. Uh, finally, they will both get off of that platform, but immediately Phelps and Showtime hitting those headshots, and that's going to be the half. 9-6. I think we have to check Henny scope for magnets. Yeah. Can we get a magnet check on Henny scope? Well, that's crazy. A lot of these shots he's hitting are like half blind. Uh, and when they're not, they're just huge flicks. But that smoke was, was fantastic. All right. Well, you guys can uh, reflect on that shot. We're going to take a quick halftime intermission, and we'll be back with half two on Mirage. We're able to take a lead. And then on top of that, they just had a lot of just great holds. Henny's hitting his shots. And overall, there was just a good kill, dis good kill distribution across the board for... Um, all the players involved. And so I think, you know, we talked about it right before this break, but uh, the pistol here might mean, I, I don't even know who's going to win, even if Dignitas, oh, that's backwards. Yeah, it's flipped. Even if Tempo starts with the, the flags. pistol. Go by the flags, yeah. Yeah, like the, the pistol could maybe decide it if it's a clean, like, 3-0 pistol... But even then, like you would expect that Tempo Storm, the Brazilians here, could close it out. And there's Showtime with the jumping Glock. Phelps to follow it up. And the pistol round going swimmingly oh, wow. for Phelps. Yeah. And the rest of his team. That's a 10-6 real quick. Literally no chance for Tempo Storm to do anything, or for Dignitas to do anything about that pistol, by the way. Like, every single shot. There was just no moment where uh, you have the opportunity to shoot back. And they hit every first bullet there with their Glocks, jumping peaking, whatever. There was just no chance. And I think almost everyone got a kill. There's only a difference of two kills between top frag and bottom frag right now on Tempo Storm, which yeah. is... That's ludicrous. Yeah, I mean, it says a lot about how... It tells, it tells a great story on TT side. That nade was not good. That nade was not good at all. Well, <laughs> Luke is running up to see the uh, ragdoll of a Kirby falling off the stairs. Now Lucas will find that frag onto MSL. Yeah, but typically you see like a lopsided kill distribution on T side because uh, your entry fragger is usually doing a lot of work, especially if you're getting a lot of rounds. But on CT side, everybody needs to pitch in, especially, you know, versus like Dick and Toss in that first half where they were bullying each side equally. And um, yeah, Tempo Storm's holds were fantastic. And maybe we'll see someone kind of take the take charge here, moving into uh, the first rifle on T side because Actually, I don't know. Uh, will they? As, how soon will they get Henny and Op? I wonder. They still got a farm round here, and uh, the, the the lead slowly gets worse for Dignitas, who are going to be down six after this free round. They're just going to try to do as much damage as possible, but it's all about money right now. I believe someone dropped him an MP7, uh, so he didn't really buy anything uh, going into this round. I really like that fake. They just threw that cat smoke that they used to that they used to cat split, and I think it fed right into the fear of Dignitas when they tried to stack B. <laughs> and it, the teammates trying to get him out of there with that grenade. He, he's still fighting. He's it's probably pretty intense for him. He's just trying to go in first and get all that money because I, I think he does want that op out very very quickly. He was trying to take every single battle, just moving forward, and that's a feels Galil man for config. He just takes a jumping Galil bullet to the face. Wow. There's, there's got to be almost no worse feeling than that in Counter-Strike. And here's Tenski. I mean, he has pretty much been the man that has, has really showed up here. Uh, one of the most ridiculous plays of the game was that, that Tenski uh, 3K round that came down to, I think, either 1v3 or 1v2 over in B. Oh, now we're going to have the buy-up. We don't actually have enough money for an op on the CT side unless someone wants to go glass cannon, which... Uh, it's... Oh, actually... Oh, it looks like Config did have enough money. He's got 900 left over for half armor. That makes perfect sense. Now MSL's gonna pick that op up. 
And uh, I wonder if we're going to see Henny and MSL go head to head. Thorne mentioned that MSL is probably going to try to avoid him, and I, I agree with that sentiment completely. Um, and there's almost no reason for the off to go head down. Whoa, what a shot from Henny. Speaking of uh, heads there, Henny is going to remove the one of Config with a ridiculous shot. So he's continuing to impress. Uh, Showtime there. Oh, that might have actually been through the smoke. I don't know if it created a one way. It looks like there is a gap. So I think Tenski exploiting that one. But even still, it's Tempo Storm to get into B, full control. They spread out into great post plants and it's four on three. Absolutely ridiculous wall bang headshot from Henny on a player jump spotting in the safest way possible, mind you. Some people do it wrong and they just jump straight up. Well, he was jumping across and that's pretty much the, the by far the, the safest way to do it. But apparently nothing is safe uh, versus Henny. You give him an inch and he'll take a mile and that entry has led Tempo Storm to take the round. So um, causing three players to save is a huge win and they might even have the opportunity to kill both of them. Phelps has walked all the way up to Palace, so a high percent chance that he might be able to shoot someone in the back. And no, Rubino fully aware of it and waiting. And it's really important to have proper exit setups. I mean, especially if you're going to save three guns. One of the worst feelings in Counter-Strike Helium is when you you say you go to save with three players and then all three of you die. Yeah. Because then you think about, wow, I could have actually, we could have attempted the retake. That was maybe like a 20% chance retake. But we probably could have got kills and maybe we could have won the round instead everyone died. So really important that they save those guns. I think uh, we just on the scoreboard very quickly. If you, if you take the last half, it's now seven rounds in a row for Tempo Storm. And here's MSL with an early kill <laughs> onto Henny. Actually, the op taken out by an HE nade, as well as some bullets, I'm sure, assisting early on. And now Kirby getting the kill onto Showtime out of the connector. So this round, the first rifle for Dignitas. Uh, going very, very well, but Bolts is going to try to earn this one back. There's a nice frag onto MSL and Phelps coming up the connector. I don't think he's been known. He almost takes that flashbang to the face, nearly turning onto the man in a sight, but it is Kirby that takes Phelps out of the round. Dignitas with the four on two advantage. Yeah, converting from uh, that huge loss last round into a great win here. They although they also saved three guns, so even though they lost that one, that, that does a lot for their economy, and now... Uh, well, it's going to be lurking up into the side. I guess this round isn't quite over yet. He's going to spot the rifle, but Whoa. Tensky has his back in a big way. Gets the kill before the trade needs to happen. And now Lucas, just with the op, the twin of Henny. Yeah, I don't know if he... Uh, Can he mirror the op I don't know if he Henny. got the opping <laughs> skills uh, genetically. Just the looks. Feels alleles, man. <laughs> I guess that's the proper genetic term. Uh, but man, that uh, that exchange with Bolt sneaking out onto A, imagine if the player on balcony went down. I think some words would have been had on the member of, uh, between the members of Dignitas, but at least yeah. Tensky was, was able to save the day. did come back to watch it. And now we've got Lucas just up at the top of middle, 20 seconds to go, waiting for something. And a player will appear. Can't get it done with the op. Nearly takes him out with the deagle. Kirby lives on 2 HP. Did, he, did Kirby have 100 HP? Because that was like... I'm not sure. <laughs> I oh, guess he was like near 60 HP. I'm going to hope so. Otherwise, he just did 98 damage in one shot with the Deagle. And let's see, biggest performer, is it Phelps with 94? Now it's Config with 96.6 ADR, so he is leading the charge there. It looks like Tensky has slowed down a little bit, but he was uh, the member kind of in charge of getting Dignitas back into form in that first half. Some very important rounds that he won for them. Dignitas have a long road back versus a very dangerous team if they want to win this map. I mean, at Temple Storm, we're already at that critical amount of rounds. The red amount of round, rounds is, I think I like to think about them. And ooh, Lucas, wow, nice Lucas. peek over that smoke. Just so confident, too, going up on those boxes to just take the shot. Rubino I'm getting a nice one. And uh, I think that was Phelps from Triple taking down Rubino. So the trade does come out. Wow. And it's Config that goes right up top. The big performer here. He will spray down another. That was just fantastic movement. You see how quickly he got up on yeah. Ticket Booth? No missed jumps. Just straight up turn that into a two frag. Uh, off the back of everywhere. Rejoice. Yeah, exactly. Um, nice angle from Config. Gets a third on the round. Big plays from him. And shout out to Rubino. He got that one kill and did like 90 damage to the other player. That was an, that was enormous. Sometimes we forget when you know because the solo site player or site player dies in the middle of the round that um, a lot of his um, efforts. Don't go to waste, especially when you have uh, teammates to come in and uh, land the, finish the alley-oop, I guess. There you go. So Dignitas, two rounds in a row.
They will still need five more to even bring it back to a tie. They should find this one here in round 22. There's really not much uh, going on for Tempest Storm. A little bit of utility. Lucas has actually already fallen, taken out by Tenski. And that was the one guy who went middle on what looks to be kind of a, a B split. One up mid and four here pushing through this smoke. A nice little flash, and that will limit Config to just the one kill. And now it's up to Tenski. He's on the window cross. He will bring down Phelps, but he's taken considerable damage down on 10 HP and Showtime to finish him off. MSL pushing forward, missing the up shot, and Bolt with a quick response. We're now into a two-on-two, -two, and the bomb is going down. This round way closer than it should have been here for Dignitas, but it looks like Kirby may yet get them out of it. And Spoltz now with armor, and a one versus two. No head armor, though, and that could hurt against the CT weaponry, but won't matter. Rabino gets that final frag. Critically important 2v2 won by Dignitas there on the retake. Obviously, when the bomb's down, it's you know slightly T-sided, depending on the positions of the CTs, but Dignitas make it work with very average retake spots. And now they're within four of actually tying this up. Tempo Storm have been known to, uh, to win rounds in a row and lose rounds in a row, and we see that starting to come into play right now. They've uh, earned themselves a save, and I think here versus this by Henny is going to have to go to town, um, putting that aggressive op to work. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Henny has really had any problem getting into town so far yet mm -hmm. uh, on Mirage. We have seen some an incredible work with that op uh, already put forth, and he's going to go for it once more. Well, everyone blind here. He won't be connecting that one, and, and that will allow MSL to take up that angle, and that's unfortunate. He lands the shot, but it's just into the leg of Phelps, so he'll stay alive, and, and Henny actually just eating that grenade. Excellent. A lot dude. of damage. So no kills, but a ton of early damage uh, given by Dignitas. Good flashes, though. Grenade usage on point right now for both teams, uh, favoring Dignitas, though whether they know it or not, have already done quite significant damage. And it seems like this whole exchange of B might just come down to to a good flash, or or perhaps a botched one, depending on your perspective, as they keep attempting to, to retake this angle. I think those are smokes starting to uh, trickle on in to the B-bomb site. Lucas, meanwhile, I don't think he's spotted. That flash was just going out, maybe testing the waters. Intense amount of coordination required for Tempo Storm to, to maintain their positions right now. And Lucas goes down a connector. That's a huge amount of information for Dignitas. They know that no one's there to trade and that most likely uh, B is going to be a problem for them soon. But have saved a smoke at the 40-second mark. This is going to put a lot of pressure on Tempo. They've got to make a decision, decision fast. And the op shots were coming through that, so Config knows that they are still there. And look how much damage he has done. Nearly 300 damage. They're so low, he's going to get two as they run out. Could have maybe got that third in this. Actually, we're going bowling here. Nope, he will miss. Gutter ball. Uh, showtime on 11 HP, one versus five. You got to say no chance, especially with 15 seconds, and he's been spotted. Uh, timeout called. It's a pretty opportune moment, I think. Uh, Dignitas won every part of that round. They did the early, they traded better with the nades. Um, they shut down all the B aggression, and they kept maintaining B apps control, which I think Tempo, they recognized the Tempo Storm wanted so badly. And then Lucas going down a connector, shutting down the Lurk is an enormous frag as well. That, that controls rotations for Dignitas. That allows them to get four rounds in a row, and, uh, and now they're completely back in this. So uh, luckily for Tempo Storm, they're able to recycle this off. But this makes the decision right now to buy, um, I guess, a little bit easier, but a little more complicated because they've got to figure out how to win this round with uh, not the most equipment, though. Well, actually, Henny, I mean, they're going to be having a, a max loss bonus, right? So everyone could buy down to like 2K, mid 2Ks. Henny could just get armor and perhaps a nade, and they could even throw the op over to him. Well, the way, the way I see it, they've got like two full buys. It's just like two people on somewhat low money. I mean, they haven't bought yet, but I assume that they're going to. Uh, it's too tempting. It's just too tempting, right? How can yeah. you tell your team no to, to not buy behind that? It's just uh, I'm sure they will. Like they have enough money to make it a, a pretty like decent equipment value round, and then still, if they lose, they've got the max bonus. Yeah. On T side, it's cheaper anyway. Uh, I'm sure they will be you know pulling out the calculator, punching in those numbers, yeah. crunching the numbers, crunching the numbers. Um, but that may not be the the most important thing to talk about for them. They just kind of got to reset. We saw them struggle in their first match against SK, right? They were up 14-1 yeah. at the half, and that ended up... Did that end 16-14? Either way, it went down to the wire eventually, maybe 16-13, mm -hmm. and something that shouldn't have happened. They should have closed it out. And in the interview, they, they cited that it was not so much complacency, as we've kind of been saying on the desk, but they just like didn't have their confidence to get back into it, which... Seems crazy. Yeah, I've but said it before, be but I, think it's, I think it's simply the thought of losing again in a situation where you threw a huge lead, coming back to haunt them, right? Just the thought of that happening again, even though it hasn't happened yet, 
it's just like a self-fulfilling prophecy that you kind of have to get through, get get over mentally. It's kind of hard to understand, you know, how a team can like blow a lead when they just played so well first half. They got to be feeling great, but once it happens once and twice and three times, you just really get in your own head about it, and that's like a, you know, that's the situation where you're your own worst enemy, and you just have that mental hurdle that you have to overcome. But beyond that, you show that you can actually. Uh, do really big things, and, and we're seeing that Tempo Storm have the capability to just outclass Dignitas on on some of these rounds. It's just not all of them. Well, so it's like we got Tenski replay coming in. Oh, this is his uh, big round where, yeah, it was a one versus three. He's already got that first kill, but in the market, takes down Bolts, and then this is that crazy. He, he takes damage he first, dinged, right? Yeah. He's the one that flicks over. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty sick stuff there from Tenski. Huge plays. Yeah, yeah Dignitas, no, the, lack, no that, lack of uh, talent on Dignitas. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was the round that either got them one more rifle or possibly the one that even broke the economy. So there was massive implications yep. for that because that first half could really have gone out of control mm -hmm. uh, in favor of Tempo Storm. I think it was 6 1 at one point. And then we had our 6 6, and then yeah. it finished 9 6. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was like the streak of like four rounds, five rounds in there, four Dignitas on the T side. Mm -hmm. And now they've also had quite a few rounds in a row because we're back to, what is it, 13-10. You know, the comeback is always real. The team's on 13 rounds. The other team gets into this double-digit territory, and then the memes come out. Comeback is real. Yeah, comeback is real. Um, and it's entirely possible for sure. Or win winnable territory for both teams is the summary um, of what we're talking about here. And uh, because we're on even, even footing in terms of equipment, or relatively even in terms of equipment for both teams, this is a huge round. Temple Storm had the opportunity to take this round uh, and then be one away from match point. That is a lot of stress off their back. And, uh, are obviously taking this pause. And <laughs> power of the pause, man. I, I <laughs> would put money on any team to win a round after a pause at this level. It seems like it happens every time without fail. And it's because they, they have the ability to think about what to do next based on what they think Dignitas are going to do next and what they've been missing in the past as well. And so, you know, a good team with a strong mind can consider their options, think, uh, you know, deeply about uh, mistakes that have been made and fix those, and while also just getting a nice mental reset where they can just calm down. And would you say it's, uh, it's fair to, to mention that maybe the power of the pause is even more present from the T side, right? Because you're the terrorist, you get to kind of dictate what's going to happen, and the CTs haven't seen maybe your, your new style yet, so they can't like adjust or, or know what to expect. Sure, yeah. So Temple Storm do have that going for them. But of course, Dignitas also had that five minutes to discuss what they, what they maybe thought was working or, or wasn't working. Uh, but yeah, will the power of the pause come into effect? We'll find out now. Really stubborn about like, this D apps control that I think they, they want so badly. And I know, and Dignitas obviously recognized it and fought for it, and that's why they won the last round. I wonder if Tempo Storm want to do something similar, but in a new way. Yeah, it definitely got them into trouble that last round. Uh, with all those flashes, everyone's trying to vying for control of that op angle. Phelps took a lot of early damage. Uh, Henny ate that grenade, and it made the round pretty tough to win from that point on. But still, we've got five alive. I don't even believe that Dignitas have spotted anybody. They know they've made some sort of contact because Spam has been going back and forth through that smoke and through the boards over at B. A couple of NA nades coming out. Yeah. MSL up in the window with his op right now. Looking for these battles. I think he, he's actually pretty limited on kills right now, but that is to be expected sometimes as that IGL. Yeah, the control has been taken by Tempo Storm. MSL, though. It's going to be a little bit adamant, but holding connector now and finds a kill. Will he get traded? No, it's actually Tenski to help him out and continue the rampage, though. Bolts goes two for two in that exchange, and now it's all on config. Not That's spotted. With two players moving to B apps. Bomb down in B apps, and now just Showtime all by himself, but config does it himself. Wow, team effort there. Everybody getting um, in on the action. Well, except for Rubino. Rip Rubino, but he didn't need it. That was a. Uh, that was cool. It was interesting, like Tempo Storm approach middle in a new way. But I think what Dignitas are doing that's really nice is that they're they're waiting for the slow play to happen, and then when the smokes come out, they're not afraid to get in front of them. You know, like they're they're like, okay, they're just assuming that with this delay control, they're gonna give it up eventually. But and Dignitas are not. They're being stubborn, and I think that that's working really well for them. Oh, that nade not gonna do as much as I would have thought to show time, but he's taking some damage as he's crossed over to middle and. He actually has scurried off. We've got Tenski once again on Cat. He was kind of the saving grace of that last round for Dignitas. 
And it looked like it might even get messy after that when Bolt's found too, but they were able to uh, clean it up and prevail. Now Config taking a lot of pressure over here. Molotov goes down. He will kind of go back to the white van, but it's Lucas that'll take him out of the air with the Tech-9. So now four on four. MSL hits the op shot onto Lucas there from the market window. Tensky completely smoked off both uh, areas of that catwalk entrance smoke. So a very nice uh, tactical execution here onto the site, but it's Rubino and Tensky ready for the retake. They've even still got utility left and kits, and it's actually just spammed the bench. Oh my gosh. He and actually he just down. had a Glock. Yeah. I, everyone else had... Was that a... Oh, they bought a couple of smokes. No, they, I guess they just had Tech-9s and I, I mixed I think Henry just doesn't go for anything because he wants to get back to that opposite as yeah, possible. Yeah, I was just wondering if they had a rifle or not. Look how much money they have for this round. That's actually too much money to have on, on a T-side round. Yeah, like you any just given don't round. need that much. You just don't need that much. And well, it sounds unless weird. Unless you want to go for the, the Gavs. Yeah, unless you want to go for the Negevs, right? <laughs> so, like, it's it, it, they, they, that actually means that they could have spent more money last round, had a better chance to won it, to, to have won it, maybe bought half armor on a couple of players, and then still had more than enough money to win here. On T-side, like, plenty of players will die without using all their utility. It's just way too hard to keep them alive. And also, like, you're just more expendable on T-side, so you don't need that many people with that much utility, in fact. Um, especially if you could have had a better chance in a, in a previous round. Yeah, I think Phelps, for instance, has like $1,600 left over this round. So that could have maybe given Henny uh, a shotgun, an SMG, or even just a, a better pistol. And maybe it could have made the difference. Here's Config taking down Lucas straight away. And MSL holding the angle here on this window, but Henny wow. just too quick. He takes that over. Then it's Showtime and Phelps also getting involved. So a four on two post plant and Dignitas, they were within one of tying it up, but Tempo Storm. They deny them that. And, you know, although it doesn't efface my point, I'd like to mention that Tempo Storm did a great job using utility this round. Like, all five of their players had... Um, had smokes, mollies, flashes, and wow. yeah, that's just a, a solid after plan. Like, I didn't even see Dignitas having the ability to come in without already being on cat or just, like, a long flank through halls. But uh, Tempo Storm having so much utility, getting rid of it all on a fast split, too. Um, doing an excellent job on that take. 14 to 12 now, have they broken the curse? We'll find out. Uh, wow. That was such find, a fast Find out next time on next episode. Counter-Strike. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was uh, seven, I think, or maybe six rounds in a row for Dignitas on the CT side, so it was quite a streak. And actually, I imagine the money's got to be quite low for Dignitas. Some of those rounds were getting pretty close. Here's MSL. There's a nice shot on to Showtime. Catches him jumping in Rubino. Trying to keep the hope of winning Mirage alive. He finds one over here as well as MSL getting that first kill, but it's Bolts with a response and now Henny, so it's a three on three. Tensky with another Molotov going pretty far. I don't know if that's landed in the, the best position. I think that'll block the run up to that default box and now MSL taking over that angle with his op. Hmm. Yeah, MSL gonna be a key player right now in a situation where it couldn't be more important for him to get kills. And one actually losing a duel now to him. And even though he got his kill, it's a 2v2. So I think this might favor Dignitas as long as MSL still has an op. And really huge impact. But Lucas killing him on the site means so much more than the damage he did with that nade on bolts. And now it's a 1v2. Bomb might get planted. Though, going to be spotted crossing. And, oh, the second kill doesn't come out. Lucas finds it and brings Tempo Storm to match point. Match point, you can tell that um, he's excited about that. Yeah, uh, looking at this guy with his knife out, I think some fist bumps were, were probably going down there as Tempo Storm, you know, not quite out of it yet. Dignitas are keeping it very, very competitive here in these, you know, final few rounds that are left. But I, that's at least an overtime for Tempo Storm. You know, I feel like the footsteps that MSL made was uh, akin to someone bleeding in water. Uh, as, you know, he was heard from Lucas running back out of the site, and the, Lucas knows he has an op, so he caught him back oh, backpedaling. Wow. And now Dignitas are actually That's about to lose map. this entire M game. MSL got aggressive into Palace, and he got shut down. And I believe another player got aggressive into middle, and then they got shut down. So that's two quick kills for Tempo Storm. <laughs> Config, go in there, Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> Come on, oh no, he pressed E too many times. All right, there, Rubino's gone out. He's picked up the off. But now he's being aggressed on by Bolts, who will take the fadeaway nade and give him the points, because he's got down Rubino. He hits the, the jumper. Great grenades. Oh, man. If you were to catch the bomb, that would be amazing, but... Lucas has no doing idea. Damage. Oh no, Lucas actually gets away. That's amazing. Or awful. Or does Depends he? how you look at it. He's here. Here's those footsteps and he pulls out a Molotov and you kind of got to wonder about that one. 
Yeah. But it may not matter. It's still a man advantage and a bomb plant going down here on the A site. I wonder if they faked the death cam far enough there, having two players spotted, but the, the bomb goes down, they're in great after plant spots, and they're probably worried about all angles regardless. You know, Dignitas, not with their terminate life, with their, with their map life on the line, are going to have to move in for this retake config very low, but has some utility. <laughs> oh, and taken down pretty much instant, instantly. And yeah, you say not the tournament life, the the map, their map life. And yeah, Dignitas will lose a Temple Storm. We see now very pleased with that one. Uh, but you got to remember, even though the maps are very, very similar, Mirage was the pick of a Dignitas. Even though I mean, it could have very likely been them picking Cobble and then Temple picking Mirage. So yeah, I, I, I don't know how much that will really matter. But you know, Temple Storm have to feel good about that one. Yeah, they have to feel good about that one. They just played extremely well. I mean, I'd say Dignitas played really well overall as well, but it came down to who made less mistakes, and ultimately that was Temple Storm, and great on them for making that adjustment late into the last half uh, to come back and clean up um, some of those rounds because it seemed like it was getting ugly for a bit. Dignitas looked extremely strong um, the, the on the B-hole for Dignitas was really good there on the CT side. Yeah. That was getting Temple Storm actually into a lot of trouble where they kept like trying to force control of that portion of the map. Yeah, Config was so consistent. Uh, MSL, when he was up there, was able to take control and keep control of B-apps. But, uh, you know, like that 2v2, for example, on, on the A site where MSL died was a really important round and uh, it just came down to who made less mistakes. So a lot of good things to be said about both teams. But now we move into Cobble, which I feel like uh, in the veto process, uh, Temple Storm might have made a mistake with, the, with picking Cobble. Even though they're good at it, I just like have so much, so many good things to say about Dignitas on that map, and so I, I worry for them, but... Yeah. I mean, even the best teams in the world are banning Cobble against Dignitas. Like, that, that's a, a big takeaway, and we'll actually see what uh, the desk has to say about it. So, Puckett, take it away. All right, thank you, fellas. Interesting game number one. Dignitas' <sighs> pick, but it's Tempo Storm's victory. This is something we saw quite a bit, though, yesterday with... Optic Gaming and Hellraisers trading each other's maps. Do you think this could be a 2-0 for Tempo, or are you expecting Dignitas to rebound?